Radio. Can you count, suckers? I say the future! Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently evaluating the Flat Earth community for the upcoming 2017 season against globalists. They look strong, deep, and determined. The Flat Earthers, not the globalists. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at MarkSargent.com, EnclosedWorld.com, or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, that's because you're celebrating in Boston. I don't even want to talk about it. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, and tonight is Friday. February February 7th, 2017. If you are not listening to this on a Tuesday night, then you are not listening to it live, so don't call into the show because then you're just going to go into voicemail. The, the phone number is still up, but it'll go into voicemail. And I am currently working on the phones right now and figuring out what's going to work. I don't know if I'm going to get it up and running before the first break. We'll, we'll try it, though. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery is... Books must follow sciences and not sciences books. That's from Sir Francis Any. No, wait, no, sorry, I mixed up stuff. Oh my gosh, I, I completely screwed this up. Uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. That's by Arthur Clarke. Wow, I am totally cutting and pasting all sorts of stuff wrong. Sorry for that. Old quote. Yes, I get it, Peanut Gallery. It's an old quote. Before we get into at least the emails, before the phone number, you know, let's give out the phone number and let's see who calls in. 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by, and by that I mean me. So if you call in, you're not going to have to go through any switchboard, which means don't be mean, because no matter where you go, there you are. Oh, boy, just about everybody's calling. Okay, I'm going to try this, guys, and we're going to add – we're answering this call, put your – or add to group call. Okay, we're going to try 203 first, see if it works, okay? Hopefully, I will not kill, get killed. Back. Okay, yes, one, two, three. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to read a couple emails to at least get something done with the show. No, I'm not going to answer phone calls right now because apparently I, I can't add to group calls. Something, something weird is going on. So let's just – I'm going to read two emails, and then I'll pick up some calls, okay? In the meanwhile, if you guys call – Hanging up on you. First one is from Greg, who sent me his Idaho flat earth license plate, which is FLT. In fact, let me see if I can find it real quick. It is FLT RTH. So his flat earth license plate is FLT space RTH. And now I'm going to read the email because he sent me his license plate and I told him I'd read it first. Mark, thanks for all your work on Flat Earth. I saw your Clues series last year and it very much helped me wake up to the truth. I was watching one of your more recent videos where you are answering email and saw all the license plates and then I decided to get one for myself. Pick is attached. I have to admit that this path has unfortunately led me farther and farther away from relating to most people. When I woke up to 9-11 about 10 years ago, I was a little sick to my stomach when the aha moment came, though I always thought those buildings were imploded from the first time I saw them come down. And then to Sandy Hook 
and the false flag discoveries since. As a student of World War II, I have thought for decades that Roosevelt baited the Japanese into attacking Pearl Harbor. Yes, at the very least. The uh, pit in my stomach grew when I found I had less and less to talk about with people. When my flat earth moment came, I was literally sick to my stomach. I'm a former Marine infantry officer. I don't get queasy, but this sickened me. I was reminded of a friend I had at work a few years ago who would call me at random times and say, everything you know is wrong, and then laugh as I try to talk my way out of that quandary. I have come to peace with all that flat earth implies and feel closer to God than ever before. But now I knew that indeed everything I knew was wrong, and now my quandary is this. Do I have the right to impose this on someone else who is happily living in the matrix? I think not. So when I saw the license plate, I thought that might be a way to connect with fellow flat earthers. My strategy if I'm ever asked about it, is to ask the person if they believe that 19 towel heads with box cutters brought the Twin Towers down. If they say yes, then I'll tell them Flat Earth is a friend's garage rock band. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good name for a rock band. If they are a little awake, maybe I can find someone to talk to. Best of luck and keep up the good work. Those of us who are unplugged appreciate you guys who are on the front lines. Greg. Thank you very much, Greg, for that. And before I, I read the next email, which is called Possible People for Flat Earth Debates, I also want to mention, let me pop up the info here on Strange World, which is not that one. Pop up the info on Strange World, he said. And that is tonight, right after the show. It's kind of a weird show tonight. Uh, you can obviously tell by the phone line issues I'm having, and hopefully I won't have an issue later. Because immediately following this show, in a little less than two hours, I am going to be doing a radio interview with a CBS affiliate out of Boston. That is WBZ News Radio, AM 1030. Being interviewed by a man named Bradley J. And I'll mention this a couple more times during the show because if you want to call in, and for whatever reason I can't get the phone lines working, and you want to call in a different show, it's not going to be my show, but I'm going to be on it, I will give you the phone numbers. You don't have to necessarily write them down right this second, but I will give them out now and several times during the show. The phone number to call in for WBZ News Radio at the very end of this show, I literally five minutes after that, I'm jumping on with these guys. The phone number is 617-254-1030. That's WBZ News Radio 1030. Or toll free, 888-929-1030. So 617-254-1030, 888-929-1030. Just remember the last four digits are the name of the station, which is 1030. Interviewing with WBZ Radio, Bradley J. And one of the things we should uh, and listen to it on radio.com. Peanut Gallery is saying, one sec, if they need it. Yes. But there's also a listen live button. If you go to, all you have to do is Google Bradley J. WBZ, WBZ, and you'll see on his bio page, you'll see a listen live button right there. And I don't know what the conditions are. I don't think you have to sign up for anything. Well, hopefully not. But either way, you should be able to call no matter what. So let's, okay, 203 is calling in. I'm going to try to answer this one more time. And if it doesn't work, I'll let the peanut gallery pick me up and then we'll figure out what we can do. Not, but am I still on the air? And now I have to rely on the peanut gallery. Peanut gallery. Now there's a whole bunch of people calling. Nope. 203. If you didn't make it the first time, you're not going to make it this time. But what I will do, if everyone can still hear me, is I will reboot after the commercial break. And hopefully I can do it in three minutes. So let's see if we got on red. And 778, look, I'm having problems with the phone. Guys, stop calling. Brian, dead, back, you're back. Perfect. Okay, so it goes dead for a few seconds as it tries to pick up the call, and then it doesn't do it. I think it's because I tried to record the I, – I had MP3 Skype recorder recording this, and I think it had a conflict. So I think I can reboot in three minutes after the next break. I'm going to – we'll, we'll, we'll do this again. Don't worry, guys. In 15 minutes, we'll see if we can pull this sucker off, and hopefully we can, we can get this corrected. So no, not a big deal. We've done this before. Heck, I remember at one point, my worst night ever – 
I went, I think, eight or nine minutes, and this was before Peanut Gallery, of straight up dead air because I unmuted the microphone or I, I muted the microphone and was talking to nobody. So, anyway. So, hey, uh, WBZ News Radio 1030, look it up. Bradley J. WBZ. I'm going to be doing that show right afterwards. Phone number to call in to that show is also on the main page, but if you don't, you know, write it down 617 254 1030 or 888 929 1030. This next email, I promised her I would read her second. She, This is interesting. You guys will like this. It's called Possible Debates for a Flat Earth. And it's by Sheila. Hi, Mark. I've called into your TFR show a couple of times. My husband and I are the truck drivers that live in Molson, Washington by Oroville in Okanagan County. Hope that jogs memory of us. Anyway, I wanted to suggest a couple of people for a possible debate about Flat Earth. The first would be Zachary Hubbard, host of the Gematria Effect, also on TFR. He recently was a guest on Jaronism Raw, another TFR host that I know you're familiar with. They had a rather lively and heated debate on Flat Earth. By the end of the show, Mr. Hubbard was still not won over to the truth of Flat Earth. He has seen your videos and remarked that they were well made. Hearing all his objections to the very good arguments Jaronism was putting forth, I thought about you and your request to have people on to debate. Granted, I know you are searching for scientists preferably debate with, but Zachary Hubbard has a real bad taste in his mouth for Flat Earthers. Seems like the Flat Earth community has really ragged on him over the years. Poor guy. I think he wants to be convinced, but he's got this horrible experience with Flat Earthers. So he's suggestion number one. Let me respond to that. Zachary, I don't even know if Jaron should have debated Zachary. Would, would In fact, would I have even... I don't know if I would have entertained him had I, I – mean, yeah, he's a debunker with a website. Actually, you know what? I probably would have. Uh, I mean I did Chris Everhard on this network and I've debated other people. So eh, maybe I would have. But I don't know if me piling on at this point because Jaron really laid in him. I mean he took him, took him to town and it, Zach didn't have a chance. Honestly, Zach was ill-prepared for the argument and or debate or whatever you want to call it. And I mean, just as it went on, he made himself a little more and more silly. You could tell the desperation in his voice. It was bad. So I don't – I mean, yeah, I could be a little, little smoother, a little easier to, to, to swallow it from his standpoint. But I don't know if he's, I'm going to convince him because there's so many flat earthers that, that are attacking him. And really, you know, if he's going to stand his ground, he's going to have to take it. Because the flat earthers aren't going to back down; they're a lively bunch, very enthusiastic. So I don't know if Zach is going to be my. Plus, remember, I, I promised the very next debate to uh, or um, Jeffrey Grupp. So can't can't do it. Th this is where I love. This is why I'm reading this email. The second suggestion is Mark D'Antonio. I listened to an interview with him on a show on Dark Matter Radio. I cannot recall the name of the show or the host, but I believe it was a replay of an original show that aired in April of 2016. He is a CEO of FX Studios and is into UFOs. But the way this guy went on about space and the moon and plants and NASA's space station, well, I thought that this guy would make a really good candidate for a flat earth debate. I am sending you a link to the show that aired on the interview. And it's from MidnightInTheDesert.com, Mark D'Antonio. This guy just smacked of being a mouthpiece for the global agenda. Maybe after listening, you might come to the same conclusion. Okay, this is the best part. I actually debated Mark D'Antonio, and it was on, if I'm not mistaken, either Dark Matter Radio or I think it was Dark Matter. I don't think it was, I don't think it was Dark 30. It was one of those two, Dark Matter or Dark 30. You can look it up. It's in my interview list. It was uh, D-I-T-R-H David and me, it was supposed to be against Mark D'Antonio and Richard Hoagland. And Richard Hoagland, he was slated. He didn't, he didn't back out. He just was a no-show. And that's because he realized the last minute, it's like, holy smokes. He's the only guy, one of the only people that I can say that his conspiracy theories do not dovetail into flat earth at all. In fact, they cannot coexist. Richard Hoagland, be Hoagland believes that there are millions of people living on the moon and the solar system is completely real and there's hundreds of thousands of people on Mars, if not millions. And so he backed, he, he didn't back out. He just became a no-show. And so they had to come up with a, with a completely different guy for the, uh, to go with Mark D'Antonio. So I went against Mark D'Antonio first and he came into this like it was an absolute joke and I just laid into him. And he, off air, I've got the whole thing recorded. I'm not going to air it just for his sake. But he had to, he quit. 
after I think 10, 15 minutes, he was done. He, during the break, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. There's no way. I, you know, in fact, he, he even said during the, during the break to some of the people, he's like, look, I'm losing to the people around him, even though they were laughing. It's like, oh, flat earth, that's easy to debunk. No, it's not so easy to debunk. So no, I, have, I have dealt with Mark D'Antonio. He does not want to meet with me again. But look up, the, look up the debate that I have. Again, it's either Dark 30 or Dark Matter. I have to look it up to be sure. But it's in my interview list. And it was uh, very entertaining. Let's put it that way. So uh, what else does Sheila say? She says, okay, that's all. We're still listening to your show on Tuesdays as much as we can. Your last interview with Daphne Rimmel was great. Loved how you rolled your R's with her last name. No, no, I didn't roll them. I wish I could roll my R's, but I can't. Starting to watch her videos because of you. Thanks for all you do, Sheila and Ray. Awesome. Okay, so I guess we're just going to go through emails for the next few minutes, and then we're going to try to reboot this machine and see what I can come up with in the meantime, hopefully in three minutes. So, so if you guys see here, no, no, I'm not taking calls right this second. We're not. Phone lines are just lighting up unknown in 215. Anyone that's calling in right now, I cannot add you. For whatever reason, it is not letting me. So bear with me, guys. Hang, hang tough. It's all right. We'll get through this. Here's a neat little email, and every once in a while, I'll get these. Ready? Here we go. This is from Joe and Sally. Dear Mr. Dubay, several different sources have published a secret lost diary of Richard E. Byrd in which the Admiral, in his own logbook, documents a personal encounter with unearthly aerial craft and an advanced race of humans, the leader of, uh, leader of which advised him that he has entered the domain of the Ariani the inner world of the earth. The leader makes further references to troubles plaguing the surface world. Remarks of the inner world and surface world are suggestive of being inside or underneath a surface. I'm trying to reconcile such remarks to the flat earth of which I am a firm believer. I have read your book, watched your videos, and listened to your interviews, and I'm very grateful for your research on the flat earth. Could you please take me through one last step? I need to know whether Admiral Byrd's published diary appears to be a fraud or if there's some plausible way to reconcile the inner and surface world references in his diary with the flat earth, I would very much appreciate a reply at your convenience. Joe Foger, Fogeros, he's out of Wheaton, Illinois. And yeah, okay, first, I don't know if they were writing to me and got the name aim wrong or if they were writing to Eric and got the email wrong because if you're writing to Eric it is tough to find his email he does not publish it in a lot of different places so I'm going to go I'm going to do the, the the nice version and say okay maybe they should have said dear Mr. Sergeant instead of Mr. DeBay who knows maybe they're watching one of Eric's videos and, and just oh yeah it's Eric DeBay that's who I was writing to do you've heard me say this on different things but I do believe that the hollow earth and the flat earth are completely compatible Compatible. In fact, I was looking into hollow earth before I got into flat earth. That's how I got into flat earth. I was looking just general hollow earth stuff. I'd looked, in it, look in, looked into hollow earth for years. And when I discovered that Richard Byrd had abandoned all his North Pole stuff in favor of the South Pole expeditions, that's when it got really interesting for me. So is his diary about the North Pole, is it accurate? Maybe. Maybe. Hard to say, though, because it could be a plant. At this point, or maybe, or they could be both completely legitimate. If he found something at the North Pole, they would want to confirm what was going on in the South Pole. If you knew that there was an inner Earth, and whoever was in the inner Earth told you that there was something going on that it was an enclosed world and there was a firmament, then maybe that's where you would go. You would immediately focus on the the outer rim because why not? You already figured out what the North Pole was about. So thank you, even though you got the name wrong. I'm hoping he wasn't writing to Eric. Who knows? It's tough to say sometimes. This one's called Media Permission. Dear Mark, I am writing an educational book about the flat earth in Dutch. And I came across some interesting media of you that I would like to use for illustration. So I'm asking you permission to use some of your media. Best regards and hoping to hear you soon. And Peanut Gallery is writing me. And... The Richard Hatch Memorial. He's haunting you with phone problems. <laughs> Thank you, Peanut Gallery. Richard Hatch, of course, was one of the two main pilots. Was he Starbuck or was the other guy? And the old school with Lorne Green, Battlestar Galactica. 
not the first. If you're if you're old enough, you remember the Battlestar Galactica is actually a reboot of the one that was done in the late seventies, early eighties, and even the old one they got all the all the way back to Earth. So Apollo, okay, Apollo was Richard Hatch. So Richard Hatch died today. I think he was in his early seventies. So yes, the ghost of him is haunting my phone, but that's okay. Actually, I think it was because I was trying to record. I was setting up the recording you know, again because you do you do something different. You know, go against your routine. Weird things will happen. I was setting up the recording so I could record the interview with CBS because I wasn't sure about how to get a hold of their archives. Sometimes those guys are seventy one years old from the peanut gallery. Thanks. I you never know when you're going to do an interview if you have immediate access to their archives or not. I've had you know small small time interviews where they said, "Oh yeah, it'll be six weeks, and we'll get you that archive." It's like six weeks? Are you kidding me? I can have this sucker up in twelve hours or less. You know, that's after building all the slideshow and doing everything up and uploading it and make sure everything's everything's good. And I don't have any copyright stuff. So yeah, six weeks. So yeah, I was trying to set up a recording. So maybe it was because I had MP3 Skype recorder going. I don't know. Possibly, you never never can tell. Oh, but back to the the media permission. Yeah, if anyone wants to do anything, use any of my stuff. Almost all of it's Creative Commons license, so especially the Flat Earth Clues and any of the the stuff I do without music and and with you know, any of my original stuff. Definitely Creative Commons license. Uh, and people have done some great stuff. A couple of people have mashed up the clues, taken clues one through eleven, and released. Uh, videos. One was called Under the Dome, full documentary. The other one was called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. Both of them are over 2.2 million hits. And I'm sure they were monetizing them. It's like, hey, look, make a chunk of change. Take take my stuff, use it, spread it around. You never know. Come up with a different name for it. Come up with a creative name for it. Because if you do Flat Earth Clues, people are going to say, oh, you're just stealing from Mark. But any language you want, by all means, take it, have it, get funky with it. This one's called Firmament. Hi, Mark, and I think we get yeah, maybe one, one or two more before the break. Hi, Mark, I just wanted to have a conversation regarding flat earth facts. First, I would like to say there are many things that have been told to me by the mainstream that I think are lies, so I keep an open mind. We are expected to believe all sorts of crap. We have absolutely no way of proving ourselves. The flat earth info is something I stumbled on a while back and thought was a joke until it dawned on me about all the other lies I have discovered. I have seen many good arguments for a flat earth, including yours. Michael Tanager, Tanager huh? has stepped up to talk about it. I respect Tellinger. T- Michael Tellinger, not Tanager. Oof, that wasn't even close. Anyway. Just a question to start. How far up is, is the firmament and why do asteroids pass through it? I do not know how far up the firmament is. It could be as low as a few hundred kilometers. If you believe in the United States military records, there was was atomic testing going all the way up to about 400 kilometers. That'd be about the bare minimum, I think. But you never know. And why do asteroids pass through it? That's also an interesting question. Because do asteroids pass through it because they're placed inside the system? It could be artificial means. You know, just take a piece of metal ore, inject it at speed, let the atmosphere friction it all up and try not to aim at any major cities, which why that one in Russia a few years back got a really interesting. Do I, do I think there's space? No, no. I think the asteroids are artificial like everything else is. Why not? Not hard to do. If Hollywood can do it, we can, you know, the, the builders can do it. I have become very suspicious as to what is actually going on in Antarctica and have been doing research on it for a few months. I would say that we are expected to believe whatever they say about it. There is no mention of Antarctica in the Bible that I am aware of. Thanks, Mike. True, there is no mention of Antarctica in the canonized books of the Bible. However, If you go to, and I'm trying to recall this here, if you go to the book of, it's not even the book of Enoch, it's the book of Jasher. And I don't know, I don't know chapter and verse, all this stuff, but I do know this, that if you go to the end of the third chapter of Jasher, it's interesting, that's when Enoch leaves the world, he walks off the world, doesn't levitate up in the sky or anything, he walks off the world. He says, he enters a land of ice and snow and more ice and more snow. Check that out. Let me get a check. All right, I'm going to reboot.
You are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. TNR. Truth Frequency Radio. I am back on. I am sorry for the delay. Nope, sorry, I can't take calls right now for whatever reason. I, it's the whole thing's completely screwed up. I cannot add any anybody to the phones right now. So sorry, to my very good. And Peanut Gallery says I'm back. All right, oh, this is going to be so fun to edit. I got dead air segments all all over the place. Luckily, with the video editing software I'm using, though, it's going to be easy to figure out where the dead is. Okay, so while we're doing this, reminder, as I'm trying, I'm going to try to do two things at the same time here. I'm going to try to actually get to my emails so I can read them. Sorry, 203 area code. And sorry, everyone that's calling in. I cannot take calls right now. The system is not letting me do it. One, two, two, three. And then C. R C Z. Apologies, guys, for all this. No, I don't want to remember my password. I better have entered it incorrectly. Let's find out, shall we? Will I be able to get into my email? And of course, I did not want to chew up on my voice the entire evening because I've got the Boston interview. May I suggest you take questions? Says the peanut gallery. Yeah, where am I going to take them? My email address? I suppose I could. All right, we're going to do something a little different. While I'm doing emails, if anyone has any specific questions that they want to ask me, please just email them to msergeant23 at comcast.net. I'm not even going to try to begin to open up chat right now. There's no way I'm going to try to open that, up that window. I might be able to do it at a break, but I try to do all, all those things at once. That's going to be very difficult. But thank you, Peanut Gallery, for, for making the suggestion. Anyone has any specific questions tonight? Email them to me at msergeant23, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23, at comcast.net. And Peanut Gallery says I could relay the questions. All right, fine. Tell you what, you guys go into the TFR chat room for this channel, and Peanut Gallery will see it. All you have to do is put it in somewhere in chat, and Peanut Gallery will see it, and he will relay the questions to me via chat and we'll see how that goes i'm not going to promise anything but you never know so there's so many voicemails and stuff uh and now the station guys uh, i think i think we are good now just can't add people to the group call no worries. We'll improvise. Okay, let's get back to it, shall we? The next, Daryl Croswell. All right, Daryl Croswell. Anyone see Flat Earth asshole take on Bill Nye? Well, you don't have to. You don't have to tell me everything that's it's in there. Usually, if it's a, if it's a question for me, okay. But that's not bad. That's not a bad one. The the. Flat Earth Asshole taking on Bill Nye. It's it's excellent. I love that, that Flat Earth Asshole is going after different characters. And he's doing a bang-up job, even though they're they're doing their best to avoid him. As a matter of fact, John B. Wells even tried to... I can reset Skype on the server if you'd like. Just say the word. Uh, one sec. Can we reset during the show? find out but yes flat earth asshole is doing a bang-up job against anybody and i just wish someone would come at him directly it would be a fun debate if he could actually sit down and, and talk to people meanwhile let's do a couple more emails 
This one's called Trump Science Advisor Denies Apollo Moon Landings Ever Happened. And I'd like to clarify that it was an interesting story. It wasn't completely untrue. The man in question, I'm pulling him up, was Yale University professor David Glernt, G-E-L-E-R-N-T-E-R, Glernt, Glernter, Glernter, oh, that's a tough name. And he was a possible candidate to be the science and technology advisor until social media started digging up that he didn't believe in the moon missions. And of course, you cannot do that in the United States. If you are in the United States and you are in any position of science authority, you have to believe in the moon missions. All right. So it, it, the guy wasn't appointed as the science advisor. And OK, and now he's saying maybe it's on their side. Maybe it's on the station side. What are you saying now? Cool. Let me know. I will try after done. May not even be me. Maybe been the station. And if it was, then hey, we'll get through this. I believe I am back on. And the peanut gallery is going to peanut gallery. Can you hear me, peanut gallery? Okay, peanut gallery. Try to call me. Only peanut gallery. Let's see if this works. Peanut gallery, call me, call me, call me, so that I can test the group call. And Peanut Gallery apparently is eating a sandwich, or he's got his pants taken off. I have no idea what Peanut Gallery There's Peanut Gallery. All right, let's try this, see what happens. Ready? Peanut Gallery, can you hear me? Yeah. Ah, crap. So it wasn't, it wasn't me after. It wasn't me. It was the server. Good. Now I know. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you hang up, and I'm going to pick up the next guy, okay? Okay. No okay. problem. 203 area code. You are on live with Strange World finally. Mark, how are you? Holy smokes, I'm fine. Make sure you turn down your radio and don't be nervous this is the first time. Oh, we're going outside onto my deck. Wait, I'm sorry, what? We uh, we went outside to my deck. We've been uh, trying to call through all night. We've been uh, having a little problem. Is it, your it's or not, right? yeah, it wasn't you. It was the uh, the station needed to be reset. So now the yeah, phone lines are working, up. and now I would imagine I'm not going to be able to read any more emails for the night, which is probably good. So what? Uh, what's where are you from, and what's on your mind? Well, I actually called in a couple of weeks ago. Um, my son was the uh, one who was wondering where clouds uh, came and went from, and uh, we're calling in again, again tonight. We have a big storm front coming in through Connecticut, so that's why we thought it was our end. Oh and, no, uh, no, it was to- happy, It's totally happy, my happy end. Work, and- you're safe. Yep, it's it's totally me. Even though, it, yeah, we got a we had a big snowstorm roll through here. Even though I'm the completely opposite end up in Victoria, Canada. So, yeah. Oh no, no, it, you're totally fine. So, what is going on? What? Uh, Nothing. You know, there's a lot of big news. I had two things. You know, uh, I heard you the other night saying that Real Genius from the '80s is one of your favorite movies. Mm-hmm. And uh, we actually have a little boat called a real genius but it's r-e-e-l-g-n-u-i-u-s and uh we thought that was pretty funny we actually laughed when you said that <laughs> and uh because when you reel things in off a boat it's r-e-e-l and uh we heard you say that we thought it was pretty funny and uh another thing we just wanted to comment on uh eric today okay now, he's a very very smart kid and uh listen uh before i even came to you it was eric's uh, website or his uh, YouTube channel that we saw. Yeah. And then uh, after like a couple months, I started to think twice, maybe about his uh, extracurricular things on YouTube. And it made me think about like, maybe it might be just immaturity and him calling you a shill is maybe way out of line. And maybe when he grows up a little bit, he's going to realize that some of his actions that he's saying online, not just about you, but also about Patricia Steer, Maybe a little, uh, you know, just uh, a little immature. I agree. I agree. Plus, you're not, I'm not, I'm not going to rip on him too badly because, as you know, I, I try not to say bad things about anybody. But power, power does corrupt. And when he created his own flat Earth society, he became the grand poobah, a number one guy who also was the admin of the site. 
And so if anyone came in and disagreed with him at all, it was off with your head. And he would ban people without even uh, hesitation, people right. that were, were reaching out to him. And right. I, I was like, oh, dude, it's like and, – and really it's going to cost him in the end because there is going to be – you know, it's not going to take too much longer. There is going to be a giant coalescing of the flat earth community. I'm not going to give away the secrets on tonight's show. That will be on next week's show. But – it's going to happen, and look, he's either going to get be a part of it or not. And he hasn't completely burned his bridges, even though he's made an enemies list. You know, and who, who's the last time that you even saw it, heard, heard of that had an enemies list? That was Richard Nixon. So, will he take down his enemies list, and will he try to mend fences? I sure hope so. I really do, because we could use him. I mean, Lord knows he has the most subscribers, not by a lot, than than other flat earthers, but he does have the most subscribers currently of any flat earther that's out there. So. Oh, I agree with you. He's a, he's a very intelligent person. Yeah. And I wish the best for him, but he needs to really grow up. And I know. he is starting to act like the people that he's actually uh, doing against. And uh, that's not how you uh, go ahead in uh, society, especially when you're trying to move a movement like this. Yeah. Yeah. That that last thing, uh, uh, Peanut Gallery says, Saddam Hussein had an enemy list. Yes, I suppose. But Richard Nixon did it first. The... <sighs> Let's put it this way. The last video he did, The History of Flat Earth, which was actually fairly accurate, but at the same time... It was actually he, brilliant. I actually watched that two nights ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was... You know, he took some shots at the end, but overall, I didn't actually hate it. He put me in there, but he didn't He didn't tear me a new one, which was fine, and eh, it's it's all right. I, 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 I still have faith. I believe in people, and I believe that... When we have a united front against us, that all this, all the stuff we have, that's all this, the, the infighting, all the dissension in the ranks, that's going to go away. So that's what I'm hoping. Oh, Mark, it, Mark, it has to because we need more leaders like yourself and uh, other people out there like Rob Skiba, Patricia, Jaronism. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We it's need, not we, like we, we have a shortage like, of people. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, we, we just need to push forward. Thank you very much for your time. I don't want to call you. I know you're very busy, but uh, oh, yeah. well, thank now you very I'm much up for everything I, you do. Because I screwed up the first entire first segment because, well, it wasn't my fault, but I, I did do, I tried what I could. Oh, and let them know. Peanut Gallery saying it's a special link so they know it's not the TFR chat. Okay, this phone call's coming in. I, anyway, I gotta go run, man. So, hey, hey uh, Mark, uh, I'm actually up in uh, Fairfield, Connecticut. I know that little uh, guy down in New York is going to be calling you soon. So, okay, cool. Right on, man. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, take care. All right, see ya. Bye bye. All right, guys. Phone number to call in is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. Those phones are working, so everybody that called while I was dying in that first segment, trying to figure out what was wrong with my computer that I rebooted twice. Okay, we're gonna pick up seven seven eight first, then we'll pick up four two five after. Okay, seven seven eight. You are on live with Strange World. Where are you from, and what are we talking about? Hey, Mark. This is Daryl calling. We met in Souk. I, Daryl, you, all you have to do is say your name, and I, I know who it is. Oh, okay. Well, I just, I've been kind of like, not necessarily trolling, but bothering everyone in the chat there, so I just thought. <laughs> how how, um, how are you, Daryl? I am well. I'm just uh, stepping out of, I'm, I'm working nights right now, so it's, <laughs> nice. I'm kind of slacking a bit, but um, yeah, I just was, um, Sorry? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, there was just, I really wanted to bring up like this new channel called Black Hole Interactive. I've seen that. I was just watching his stuff today, Black Hole Interactive. He actually included the article that I read, weirdly enough, from the Atlantic magazine, the, the narrative that I did, and which was interesting because the guy that I'm interviewing with after this show is over on the Boston radio station, he worked for the Atlantic magazine. Yeah, well, I heard that. That was in, when he was talking about the crepuscular rays, I think. Uh, I think so. Well, um, actually, the Atlantic Magazine article, what I was reading, was about the uh, no forest on flat Earth. But that's, oh, right, okay. That's right. So I've watched all of those ones so far. Um, I just want to make sure that I mentioned that the one video on their uh, flat Earth theory yeah. dash map theory explanation on, on flat Earth, and it yeah. explains, like, the the procession of the equinox thing or like like the the wobble 
of the earth, how they say it wobbles in the gold models, but and and it's, it explains like um, weather systems and it's just amazing. Like because that's been one kind of like Achilles' heel for me in my understanding, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I don't know, and I just wanted to kind of just kind of stay in touch. Um, oh yeah. Oh oh hell, man. Was, you you can. Again, if we do another function, you know, in the spring coming up in Victoria, I, I I would think you'd be there. But let me ask you this. Let's say there was a bigger event, something on a national level. Do you think you'd attend? Well, I would definitely do that. Um, uh-huh. I'd even help organize if it was in Vancouver. Oh, you would. Yeah. Well, no, no, you would, it, it wouldn't be. No, no, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be in Vancouver. But I'm just saying there might be something coming down the road that's big. That everyone would be at. I'm just saying. Oh, for sure. I would. I'd probably because uh, I'm kind of like you. Every morning's a big bowl of flat earth. <laughs> right on. All so, right. so um, yeah, I would definitely be there for sure, without a doubt. Cool. I'm. Um, I'm, I'm thinking it'll be late. It probably after summer. But I'm. I've got a funny feeling that there might be something coming. That's about all I can say. So that, that's what you were saying. You were going to mention next week, maybe. Yep. Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to happen. It, I, again, this cool. is some this is something that's long overdue, but uh, that's the rumor. That's the rumor mill right now. That there's something's going to happen. It's going to be it's going to be super huge. Well, I can't wait, then, man. Um, right yeah, on. I would definitely make sure that I'd be there. So, All right. well, hey, you um, know what? I definitely keep, owe you a couple beers anyway. So. Keep, keep it keep it under your hat. This is just between us, okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I know you've probably got tons of calls to take. I just wanted uh, to. Yeah, um, I'm going to have to catch up. Sorry. But um, yeah, um, just also, uh, everyone subscribe to Daphne. Um, that Antarctica secret channel is gone now for some reason. It was up for like two weeks. All right. I want. I was. And um, yeah, okay. Hey I man, hey, this, but... you, it's it's no worries. You can remember, we, in fact, if if you if you're staying up, call into the uh, call into the Boston show later. Yeah, um, well, I'm at work till midnight, so um, I'll be listening to that. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah, because I, uh, <laughs> I, I start that at uh, about 9 in a couple, an hour and 10 minutes, give or take. Yeah, I'm going to listen to it. All right. So uh, hello to everyone in the chat and who's listening. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll just talk to you soon. All right, man. You have a good night, okay? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Okay, bye-bye. All right, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111111. And I'm so sorry that the phone lines were messed up in the first segments, but it was not my fault. You can blame... Well, I'm not going to say who you're going to blame. It wasn't me, though. All right, here we go. 425 area code. I'm going to play Call Roulette. You are on live with Strange Worlds. Who are you? Where are you from? That was, that was Joe Jackson stepping out. Where am I from? I am from Highway 5 North in a big traffic jam in close to Everett. Oh. Washington. Cool. What's anyway, this uh, is Elizabeth. I'm sorry. Who, say, um, say it again. This is, this is Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. Uh, you said email you but before you had the phone. So I'm in this traffic jam. So I typed an email. And then when I was typing it, you said go to the. Go to the chat room. Whatever. I know. And then, <laughs> then, then the you got the phone. So anyway, I made it to call in. So I have an actual question. Yeah. So I'm going to Sedona, Arizona next week, and then also visiting my parents near Scottsdale. Okay. And lo and behold, actually somewhere I'm going to be, there's a conference. So there's a UFO conference in the same town my dad lives in, which is amazing. Really? So I signed up for um, a few days. So it's got Richard Dolan. Nolan, that is in Dolan, Richard Dolan, Sam Freeman, and there's a lot of MUFON people, and it's the 20th anniversary of Phoenix Flight. Anyway, so I was just going to play very quiet and just spoke in whatever, because it's five minutes from my dad's house. But I thought, let me see if there's some simple question I can ask without bringing too much attention to myself, but that would further the flat earth. Hmm. Hmm. I can say, why didn't you debate Mark? <laughs> what are you talking about? Which I don't know if they'll all have questions at the end or how it works, but I think it's a pretty small. 
because it's the same weekend as the Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles, which is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so wait, so you're debating whether or not to, to go into this thing and, and kind of represent? Ask, yeah, like ask, ask them a question and not say, you know, why don't you believe in flat earth, but just... Is there some leading question? Kind of well, if you want to come at them sideways, you could do it sort of like a like a census thing, and saying, "Are there any conspiracies that?" Because this is sort of a conspiracy crowd, yeah. Yeah, you're for. Yeah, yeah. So you could you could go up and say, "Are there any conspiracies you don't believe in?" And what about you? you throw it, throw out a couple other examples, like Bigfoot, uh, lo- the, the return of Elvis flat earth and see what sort of what their impression is because it would go, you know, I would expect them. You, you, you're not going to be shocked by the answers here. And that is, they will, they will probably shut down. Honestly, how many, I have not run into a, a, a single conspiracy guy yet that, that liked it right off the bat. You're going to get, you're going to get, I so if you're going to do it, save yourself some, some pain and heartache and come at them sideways, sort of like flat earth taxi driver, which is come at them sideways with it yeah okay. I, I would so otherwise I will... you're just asking for it seriously you're gonna get a whole bunch of ufo guys on top you got to remember uh, the the guy that i mentioned at the beginning of this show the the he right. was head of one of the uf it was like a big ufo photographer and he still treated me like i was from a mental institution yeah that's not good no <laughs> so just be careful don't, That's don't. why I was going to just be silent, but I said, well, maybe there's a simple thing. So I'll write this down, and if there's any Q&As at the end of the ones that I've asked, um, yeah, you know, yeah, Brit, to, I, that's what I would do. If I was there, I'd say, look, are there any conspiracies you guys don't absolutely – are? what are the le- your least – three least favorite conspiracies? That would be kind of a cute one. And then kind of throw in the subliminal suggestion. What about Flat Earth? And then people will go, well, of course, Flat Earth's like number one on my list. That's what I'd be kind of curious to hear, but but I'm not. I will not be surprised by the results. I can almost guarantee it. So anyway, and also one of the nights they're going to have some night goggles available, and it's going to be held at the pool area. So I'm going to try to get my hands on those. Got it. Check out. Got it. Okay, we're hey we're going to break. So um, hey, you gonna you gonna be around? You might call into the Boston show. Uh, I don't know. All right. Well, if you're up, think about busy, it. But then I might be free. Okay. Right. Well, it's right after this one, so I don't, I don't know when they're going to open the phone. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And I think I've got my groove back about this point because we are taking calls. But before we take calls, don't hit the dial button, monkeys. I want to mention a couple things real quick. One is MarkSargent.com is, is the subscription site. EnclosedWorld.com is the free site. There are apps. There are things out there to buy, like my book. 
which is Flat Earth Clues in book form and in audio form. Tomorrow, by the way, I am doing a show with Patricia Steer, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, The Secret Show, 3 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 Central, and 6 Eastern, which is interesting because most Americans only think that, oh, there's, there is Denver, there is Salt Lake City, and I think El Paso. There is not much there. So uh, we're not going to do flat earth news at the moment because I'm backed up on emails and we will, we'll, we'll get back to it eventually. And you went dead back when, wait, when did I go dead? Was I dead? Holy smokes. Did you hear anything I just said? Oh, for the love of God. Did I, all right. Now I know what I, I didn't even say. Did I actually give credit to Patricia Steer? Trisha Steer, did I actually mention the show? Because I know you're listening out there. Okay, good. Good. That's that's fantastic. And the music makers. If you guys like the music at the top of the show and the top of the hour, that was done by Chip Baker. He's he's done some stuff. I do not know what's happening with the show tonight. It is the ghost of that actor from the 70s, and I forgot his name, even though Peanut Gallery thinks he's really a big deal. 720-897-6111. Oh, I'm going to have so much fun. Edit it, it dropped during the times. During the times? Why did it drop? There's no reason for it to drop. How's my connection doing? It looks solid. Everything's green across the board. I've got no problems with this. All right, fine. The Patricia Show. I'm going to pick up this call. Is tomorrow at 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern. You guys can fill in the rest. 215 area code. You are on live with Strange World during a really weird night, technical-wise. Oh, I'm aware, Mark. I've been listening. Thank God you freaking answered. Hey, it's Sean from Boston. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Promising uh, not to swear as much as I did before. I was uh, very excited last week. I'm sorry for that. But, That's uh, okay. You know, whatever. Uh, you know how, how um, so uh, yeah. I just wanted to say uh, you were talking about uh, Antarctica earlier, yeah. and that was a great freaking segue of from what I've been listening to. Do you uh, are you aware of Steve Quayle? Steve Quayle, I mean, he's on, the... yeah, he's been on Coast to Coast a bunch. He's older. Uh, he talks with a lot of uh, you know people in the government. He doesn't like to give names or whatever. He's pretty good about you know keeping secrecies, but he gives out good information. It seems. Still there? I lost you for a second. Oh, talk- oh, did you hear anything I said about him? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did, but you dropped off for like two or three seconds. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, That's yeah, okay. no, I, he, uh, he's been, he's been talking about Antarctica a lot lately, and he's got his YouTube channel going right now, and he's, he's got these things called uh, the QCast. QCasts are going right now, and uh, he's, he is, um, and he dropped off again. Is this me? Hello. Yep, yep. I can hear you again. Oh yeah, he uh, he uh, yeah he he's been talking about Antarctica and you know a lot of the stuff about uh, uh, Rob Skiba talks about the the Nephilim and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's been talking about uh, Antarctica and you know how everybody's been going down there and stuff and he has insider you know just information without naming names about just stories of you know the different people going down there and what is down there and like there's there's a lot of ruins i think uh down there and and it's uh, i you know i i've always said like i've called them before i've always said that like antarctica i mean uh, antarctica oh my god uh, uh atlantis the atlantis civilization was worldwide you know even even if it is the you know antarctic ring or of just land or whatever you, you know it could yeah. be you know what i mean yep. so uh I think I think they're gonna like you like you were saying like oh, oh you're gonna you know you say something about next week or something I heard you say earlier in the show but uh, yeah uh, you know I, it, it definitely feels like something's coming you know we all feel it we're all fucking scared and you know uh, who is it right like it's yeah. just curious you know yeah uh, it's 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 a uh, but uh you know we're all here together and that's why we're all talking right and right on gotta keep keep talking uh, you know I've been participating in local groups and and you know just trying to do certain things to make everyone uh you know uh feel like comfortable with each other you know like right on com- excellent camaraderie, hey, you, so, camaraderie. so if you're if you're out in boston you're gonna call into the uh the boston show i'm doing right after this i'm still up what uh what if, if i could write down the number if you let me uh oh yeah 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 right it's here it's toll it's, it, it's toll free 
And it's all right. What's the number? Uh, it's eight 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 nine eight eight nine two nine. 1030 and that's that's the uh, that's the address of the station it's am it's news radio 1030 and and and, and who is that just a, is that just some regular local uh, Boston station yeah or, yeah it's a, it's a it's a it's a CBS yeah. affiliate out of Boston the guy's name is Bradley J and before is we it, it's like TV or radio radio and oh cool and I was really I was kind of hoping if it, if the technical issues got solved right away that I would put out to people as like, you know, find out for me and let me know. Call in and let me know because we still have an hour left. Why this guy is interviewing me? Because I was looking him up online and this is our little secret between us because he's not so listening. Basic he's, question. Basic question type of shit. Yeah. Well, he doesn't do he doesn't do conspiracies. Yeah, it's a late night talk right. show on a right, right. Thing. Very it's light, a, very light, very light. Okay. Yeah, very light stuff. I mean it's Yeah, it's, so I'm not gonna run and oh, where's the curvature? Where is it? Yeah, yeah. He, I, I don't honestly, I don't know why he is covering this story at all. It just does not make any sense to me, because he, uh, there's a lot more. You, like you know, the closet flat earthers, like you said, you never know. You know. Yeah, so, I. But I mean, maybe this he'll is surprise guy, you. Maybe he'll you surprise you. He'll be like, hey, so uh, what's up with this? You know. I, you know. Well, let me let me put it this way. Just a, what two months ago, he runs a story on one of his weekly video pod things called "What I Really Want for Christmas." It's like that's that's the heavy stuff, really, man. That's you know what okay. what, what wine is okay. good in Italy. So I don't know. We'll see. I I got a funny feeling his producer. Who knows? Maybe he's dying. Maybe he's quitting. You know, maybe after this episode. Because I've already had you. Most people don't know this art, but I've had two stations, two guys completely shut down their broadcasts and used me as their last go round. Mm. And I couldn't and I couldn't even yeah. air them because there was no archive. They were gone. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Just so you know, this is the last show I'm doing. I figured I'd end in a bang. And, yeah. like, okay, this this could be the guy. He's been in the radio biz for quite a while, and, you know, he's doing a late-night show. Who knows? But uh, Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, well, anyway, uh, I just I definitely look, look, you know, I know you've been talking about Antarctica and stuff, and uh, I think there's a lot of stuff going on with everyone going down there, you know, Buzz Aldrin just went down yeah. there and all that nonsense. So, like, uh I definitely look up Steve Quayle. I think like even, he's not a flat earther. Um, he, you know, he might secretly be one, and he just doesn't talk about it because of his presence or something, maybe. But like he knows people who know what's going on. Mostly, it seems yeah. he, he, he. It's at least worth the listen, you know. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, yeah. He, he, but he, you know, he's been around forever. That's uh, good. Uh, but uh, but yeah, and uh, yeah. Uh, I'll uh, hopefully talk to you next week. I'm glad I'm I sure you will get through this week. You know. Oh know no! no rough, hey, hey, I'm glad. Hey, uh, credit <laughs> credit the station. They got it fixed, which is good. But if you want to uh, talk, yeah, yeah, I got the number saved. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you in a bit. And uh, if if it even gets into flat earth, you know, I'll I'll feel it out and give the good kind of question, like you right know, on. Uh, you know, okay, you know what I mean. The simple yeah, I do. ones. I do. Thanks, man. All right, man. All right, I'll see you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye bye. All right, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. Tomorrow I may do a Q&A show because now I don't have to pump through all the emails and, and I'll have a whole bunch of fresh ones for the email show. And tomorrow, of course, I'm going to be doing the secret show on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes with Patricia Steer. And tonight... Literally seven minutes after this broadcast ends, I am going to be interviewed by WBZ News Radio 1030 in Boston. They're a CBS affiliate. The guy's name is Bradley J. You can go, you can look up Bradley J. WBZ and you'll see a listen live button next to his biography. But I'm kind of curious if anyone has any theories other than the peanut gallery, why exactly I am being interviewed. Me. Oh, yeah. And get the secretary on the email show, says the peanut gallery. <laughs> I'm going to try to get the secretary on the email show. It's tough. Look, she's she's irresponsible and and lovely. But, you, you know, you've seen the types in the shows. Beautiful and yet she, you know, sometimes couldn't give the time of day to you. So we'll see. We'll see. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. 720-897-6111. And let's get to another email. This one is from Matthew. 
He says, is there any evidence of the moon has a putrefying effect or is this better explained by the absence of sunlight? Does the putrefying effect occur just as well in a cave or enclosed environment like a dank basement? Thanks. I have no idea. Matthew, <laughs> I don't. I haven't seen any flat earther go into the putrefying effect of the moonlight. All I can tell you is that the moon generates a cold light. Could that be similar to the whole putrefying thing? It's a weird word. Don't use it very often. Very possible. Look at all the cold experiments. Okay, here's a phone call. 352 area code. You are on live with Strange World. Where are you from? What are we talking about? Hey, Mark. I'm calling from Melrose, Florida. Melrose, Florida? <laughs> Yeah, well, we're training like cats and dogs here. <laughs> it's and it's it's pretty late where you are. What do you? It, this has got to be past your bedtime. Ah ha 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 ha! You don't know what my bedtime is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You may be a night owl. So what's uh, what's on your mind? Well, I'm just calling to throw in my support for you. You uh, actually, Eric DeBay was the first person I heard speak about flat Earth, but you were the uh, main person. I, I listened to your flat earth clues and I was sold. <laughs> Hooked on it. Well thanks. Thanks. Did you see did you see the last thing I just made? The uh, No, actually I did. I'll have to go and check that out. What is it? Oh, it's called Are You Sure? The the title of it officially is The Your Your World is a Globe. Are you sure? And it's, oh, okay. it's me having a pretend conversation with a scientist who's also played by me. And it goes, <laughs> it goes through the five stages of acceptance. And so far, it is scoring very well. So I, I was kind of pleased. I came up with it, and I really liked it. And so enjoy it. If you like the Flat Earth Clues, I, in fact, I put it in my Flat Earth Clues playlist, and it comes right after number 12 now. Great. Well, I definitely will have a look at it. I have, I have been following you and... Uh, Rob Skiba and Jaron and everybody for over a year now. My daughter and I, we both uh, listen to your show. And nice. Well, the, other, the, the other gentlemen, too. Those two, well, yeah, there's just two of many guys. But Jaron's doing a bang-up job with his, his show on this network, Raw, and the spinoff, Globebusters, and you know, all his other work. And Rob Skiba's been doing some amazing work recently dealing with Horizon. And sunlight and visual issues with atmospheric lensing or atmospheric looming, fantastic. If you, if you if you haven't caught up on Rob's work recently, definitely look what he's done in the last couple of weeks. Oh, I absolutely will. I do follow him. Uh, you know, for his his other things. You know, the the nephilim and things like that. Cool. You know, when when I first heard your uh, flat Earth clues, it, I was I was not confounded or confused. Like uh, some people are, it all seemed perfectly natural to me. Nice. And and I I actually spoke with members of my family about it. My parents, who are both in their eighties, and and one of my brothers, who's a little bit younger than myself, and they were all intrigued by it. No one poo pooed it or or shot it down or anything. So they were all thinking about it. Awesome. But it seemed so natural to me. You know why? An enclosed Earth is. I'm a, I'm a born again follower of Christ, mm-hmm. and if if our Father is loving and heavenly, uh, heavenly and loving, of course He would make an environment for His children that is safe and protected, yep. like any parent would. <clears throat> yep, it makes absolute perfect sense. Yeah, uh, it did, did to me. That's for sure. So me I'm, too. I'm I'm glad I'm glad we're on the same page there. Well, that's wonderful, and I will continue to follow you. I don't know about your show tonight, but, you know, after this one, but <laughs> but I will continue to follow you, and I'll look up uh, those new things that Rob has done. I actually hadn't found anything new by him recently, but oh, I've been no worries. And, and Jaren for the, lately. And for the people listening on YouTube, I, I'll, may, I'll edit this thing to where no one will even know. They'll just think, oh, some couple little technical glitches, but they won't hear all the horrible nightmare that went on in the first 30 minutes. Oh, no, no, that's okay. I actually met the, the show that you're going to be interviewed on oh, after this oh, the one. Boston I don't know if I'll be show. able to catch it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Boston show should be interesting. Again, I'm super curious why this guy, why a non-conspiracy. He's about the cleanest straight arrow I've ever seen. I, well, looking through his bio, 
He's never touched anything like this. It's like, look, you haven't even looked into JFK officially on air. What are you doing? Unless, you know, maybe there's, maybe he is. Maybe he's a closet guy. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. He might have been so intrigued by, yep. uh, by what you post. So Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> well, I want to thank you again and say keep up the good work. Thank you. And uh, I will be following you. All righty. Hey, you have a good night, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Do the same. Stay dry. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That number is 720-897-6111. And holy smokes, 845 is calling in. I'm sorry, but Mark isn't available to take your call right now. You should leave a message or not because you're live on Strange World. (laughs) You're awesome. I was like, wait. Elaborate voicemail hoax. Yeah, that so doesn't sound right. Seven seven six zero area code. You're gonna have to wait till I'm done with eight four five, which probably won't be until the break, because he's probably gonna cut it too close. So seven six zero call after this next break. Uh, so funny. what's going on, man, out in New York? Uh, not much, not much. Uh, uh, like in the callers you have already, awesome people. I'm so yeah, glad, I'm so glad people are waking up and making the call you know it's funny i i have a quote of course uh you you'll you'll probably know who it is okay go Um, what do you got when you do nothing you feel overwhelmed and powerless but when you get involved you feel the sense of hope and accomplishment that comes from knowing you are working to make things better better nice who who said that albert einstein albert Albert Einstein einstein said that I, yeah, I the same guy here. that the same guy that said uh, gravity should not be responsible for people falling in love. Yes, <laughs> nice. Yes. I, uh, but I, I think it's appropriate for this year. I think more people are going to open up and get involved and talk. Even though you know we still know the rule, yeah. you don't talk about flat club. Yep, but. Like you said, come at them sideways that we have to be aggressive with this. Yeah. People are, are so programmed. Yep. Yep, they are, definitely. And we'll we'll get them. Don't worry. Again, we have a I, I hate I can't use hundred percent anymore because I don't know, but we have a ninety nine percent retention rate. Find any other group that has that. And yeah. people people will walk away from Flat Earth temporarily, but they always come back. They always come back to the yeah. party. Only, you know, and I wonder, has anybody ever seen anything of uh, Dan? uh, What was his name? Oh, Tiger Tiger Dan? Dan? I saw a religious thing or something, I thought, but. Oh, hang on. I got a quote quote from the peanut gallery for you. A scientist will never show any kindness for a theory which he did not start himself. And that's from Mark Twain. Nice. A scientist will never show any kindness for a theory which he did not start himself. That's really true. That's actually very yeah. profound because scientists are bitches when it comes to public, publicly – or I'm sorry, getting published. Everyone wants to get published first. Uh, yes. Interesting. Yes. There, you, there's all sorts of fun stories about battles between scientists. So – but – sorry, go ahead. It's despicable. I was just agreeing with you. It's, I mean – they're, they're despicable. You should be open to everything. Yeah. You know, you can't just, oh, I got to be the first one, and my theory is the only one, and that's it. And the, oh, my goodness. People, I, I know, pe- people don't like sharing spotlight in, in general. And that, that's what I kind of felt with when I was doing the Flat Earth thing, when I, when I did the Flat Earth Clues back in, you know, it's coming up on a two year anniversary here in three days. And ugh, two years flies by. And I was in Colorado two years ago. And wow. I mean, like Eric, for example, not to not to pick on Eric too much, but it, that's what it kind of felt like. You know, everyone's kind of jockeying around. It's like, I was the first. And Matt's like, no, no, I was the first. And Paul Michael Bale's like, no, I was the one that told Eric. And it's like, look, nobody invented Flat Earth. Get over it. I didn't invent it. I created an easy guide. Eric wrote 200 clues. Matt did a great monologue. You know, we, we all contributed to the same goal. So... so we, Stop fighting over the spotlight. I know everyone wants it, but we're, uh, I can understand it with scientists and actors and politicians, but not us. 
you know, we're conspiracy guys. We shouldn't be shouldn't be fighting over that stuff. I think maybe if it ever become public and you know the initial shock and they need someone to help them through it because we've been go you know we've been looking at this for years yeah it, then maybe we'll get a spokesperson or maybe we'll need a spokesperson then but yeah. right now it definitely has to be community it, you know together oh, yeah. maybe not uh, organization and, and, <laughs> What I try to tell okay. people is like, look, yeah, I do a lot of interviews, but that's because I make myself extremely easy to find. I put up my real name, my real phone number, my real address, my real email. It's it's not hard. And, you know, find try, people still contact me. Well, at least in the beginning, they uh, they it was tough to find Matt. He would not. He was not an easy guy to track down at all. And Eric, does anybody have an like a quick email address for Eric Dubay? It's no. you'd think that somebody, yeah, you have to go through Ifers or whatever the other thing. It's like, if you want to get people to find you, let them find you. Uh, sorry, I could go off. Right. Yeah, but... right. Make it available. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we all started on that end where we thought it was batshit crazy to, to look at this. Yeah. And we, we have to definitely, because. I, I noticed the, the programming is super, super thick. It really is. It's it's brilliant. Oh yeah, the way it works. I mean, it, it truly is. You talk to someone about it, and immediately you can see their body language changing. They're getting emotional, and, and it's yeah. like, whoa, 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 just have a conversation, relax. You know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I I only get aggressive like that with my close friends. That I know that you know they're not going to like actually attack me. You know. Yep. You know. You're a jerk, and that's it, and we'll move on. I know. But, it, yeah, we it, have to. Everyone's got their own absorption period. So, do you have any, um, we got break in like two and a half minutes. What uh, What else do you want to uh, talk about? Oh, I was actually going to say, from your last caller, it's actually past my bedtime. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm now an AARP member. Oh, <laughs> so, man. So sad. Well, um, it's, man, you um, know, um, wisdom comes at a price. So, yeah. So I yeah, imagine you're not I, staying, you're not going to stay up for my Boston interview. Absolutely. absolutely. Oh, no, no, you don't have well, to. Um, I have to because it's going to be interesting. If anybody wants to, it's super easy. All I did was type in the 617 number into Google and it brought right the radio station right up. Click on it, boom, it was live. Oh, it was right there. The 617 254 Yep. Nice. Yep. Right. I'm I'm still still dying to know what what's going on in this guy's head. I really am because yeah. this is so far outside his wheelhouse. I, you know, part of me hey. thinks he's he's had some sort of breakdown, and hey. and he's like, oh, you know, or he's really dug this. He's one of those closet guys that's just he's going to put himself out there right now. He's going to come out of the closet on air and say this is pretty yeah. good, or he's he's going to try to attack it. But I I can't see what the good would be there. So well, maybe. Board and he totally wants to do this, and then tomorrow he's committed into a mental asylum. <laughs> or tomorrow he quits. Yeah, something yeah. like outland. Yeah. Like, it's... what the hell? Oh, wait, wait. There's I got one more um, before you go. One more quote, apparently. The peanut gallery can't let this go. Uh, here we go. A historian who would convey the truth must lie. Often he must enlarge the truth by diameters. Otherwise, his reader would not be able to see it. <laughs> Mark, that's also Mark Twain. I, I, I love Mark Twain. He is just such a mind bender. Yeah. I, 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 it kills me because people are, always think that we're at the pinnacle of, of technology and humanity and we're the smartest and that's And look at this guy 100 years ago was already on the scene, knew what was going on, was already tell, trying to tell people, hey, open your eyes. You know, there's so much crap going on all around you. Yeah. You know, it, uh, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and well, yeah, it's, again, and I think we've jumped the shark when it comes to media. Remember, the best year of movies, and I challenge anyone, the best year of movies in cinema of all time was 1999. We have not even come close. Look at all the movies that were released in 1999. I did a video, I think, on it once, and I don't know if it's on YouTube, but check it out. Yeah, they were. So. You know, and I've noticed a lot, a lot more of 
mainstream media using the we fake the moon thing as a gag. Yeah. Hey, Ben, <laughs> we're, we're going to break, so I got to let you go. All right. Thanks, Mark. Keep all right. Maybe, maybe talk to you later tonight. All right. And hey, hey to all the callers, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Real people, real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World. I'm your host, Mark Sargent. Getting a little musical here for a few minutes. And yeah, that was Joe Jackson, or at least a cover of it, stepping out from his album, Night and Day. And phone calls are coming in. 760, let's pick you up. You're on Strange World on a really weird, technically odd night. Who are you? Where are you from? Uh, my name is Bob. I'm calling from Carlsbad. Right on. What's How you doing, uh, buddy? What's what's going on in California? <laughs> you know, I live near the coast, so I always, you know, there's certain islands you see out there from time to time, and always takes that right kind of sunset, the one where the dry air pushes off over the ocean, and mm-hmm. all the islands come into sight. Those are the nights you see it. So nice. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, did you see? Uh, did you see uh, the interview with uh, Rogan and Alex Jones? I I didn't watch the whole thing. I heard, well, I saw that they were drinking whiskey and having uh, some drugs and doing whatever else. But I thought, did they mention Flat Earth like once or twice, I think, just vaguely? I they just mentioned the two words. That was it. But yeah. um, what I, I guess what I took away from it, Mark, was uh, it looked like Alex was going with a secret space program kind of angle you yeah. know i don't know what do you think they are maybe they're setting this up for a some sort of future disclosure and they're going to go with this secret space thing you know yeah, may- well maybe i mean you could go with secret space program a la richard hoagland and then say that they discovered something with the secret space program possibly yeah maybe. but ju- see alex jones i don't know wait i don't know if he has that much info because their show, and I think I've said this on, on more than one occasion, they, they contacted me and they wanted to do a Flyers show, but they couldn't figure out how to do it without sounding completely nuts. They were terrified of losing subscribers. The, the, in fact, the, the line was that they used was like, how can, how can we – can we do a Flat Earth show without actually mentioning the words Flat Earth? Right. And I said, you make it maybe about 10 minutes in. And then after that, you're stuck because eventually you're going to have to say the words. You, you, the other shoe is going to have to drop. People going to want it's like, what are you talking about? What are you dancing around? And they were just, of course, they weren't the first person to say that. Lots of people that have, have talked to me have mentioned that they were scared of the topic because of the backlash. And there are some people that have not had me back on because – the, that knee-jerk response from the listeners, they'll come in and just start attacking. And uh, in fact, there was this moment, uh, not to drop names, when I was doing Coast to Coast, and George actually read it on air, where someone you know wrote in in chat, he's going, you know, George, destroy him. He shouldn't even be on. And George defended me. I have no idea why. I was like, why, why wouldn't George go after me? Who knows? Maybe he was getting softer in his old age. I, I don't know. But and then yesterday or Sunday, you know, at the Super Bowl, there are, you know, they, well, you know, the Super Bowl is in Houston, right? So yeah. we, all, we all know it's in Houston, right? You know, oh, Houston. yeah. So they were doing like they had a one piece on the NFL network where they went to the space station and, or not the station, but the, you know, the complex there and they put the suits on. And I mean, it was just so balled out. Oh, I, mean, just, oh, I know. Well, it was, no, did, did, it was just a, it was an attack on my subconscious. I was like, Oh my God. Did you, you know? catch the part where 
they had the the two astronauts in the ISS. Oh, one yeah. one was wearing the Falcons jersey and one was wearing the yep. Patriots jersey. Yep. And you caught you caught the Brit the problem with that. Oh yeah, they oh. you know how where all the other jerseys. Yeah, yeah. Either one because the 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 again the the internet minces nothing. It's like okay, we checked, and the last mission to leave was early on in the playoffs. Yeah. So if you didn't know for sure who was going to only one of three possibilities, either you knew exactly who was going to be in the finals, which is possible, of course, two, you sent up all the uniforms anyway. And if you're talking ten to thirty thousand dollars a pound, you know, if you believe that, yeah. then that's a lot of money. Who, who, pon- who ponied up the money for that? The NFL, you know, they're not they don't just start throwing money everywhere. Uh, or what was the last one? Or you did a secret, yeah, just, you, or, or you did a secret, a, a secret launch yeah. that nobody knew about. Yeah. And well, you know why? what? Though? Here's the thing. So I sent the link. I sent the link of that to a, a friend of mine, and he sent me back some link of. I guess there was there's there is a link in existence. I saw the video where they showed them <laughs> opening up the box with all the jerseys and flying all around the inside of the space station. Oh, serious jerseys? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know when that came out, but it was on some. You know, I got the link. I'll send you the link. I got your email. Then, so you- then that goes along with the 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 ISS is way too they, they're they're throwing around the cargo stuff way too liberally, meaning you. So you're going to get approval from the NFL for all those pounds of jerseys. You're going to get approval for guitars and flutes and gorilla suits. And all this other crap, you know, it, which is hideous. I mean, seriously, a gorilla suit? What? How? Who f- footed the bill for that? If and, if that and, was and, real. And, here's, and here's another thing that drives me crazy. Almost ninety five percent of the interviews when they have those astronauts on, it's every single subject matter. It's about how are we going to survive in space? Yeah. It's just. And it's just like, how, how are you doing up there in space? And how are you doing it? And it's all about how your body's going to handle it. Yeah. And it's never about, like, what are you really doing up there? Right. I mean, are you really just up there to see how you can live up there? I mean, there's got to be more than you're doing than just trying to figure out how you're going to live in space for all this long period of time. Yeah. And you- so uh, they, don't, they, they, they stay away from, like, saying you know, that they've, they're actually doing a real experiment. You know, so it's crazy. did you did you see and, and I, I hate to cut this too short because unfortunately I, I, I screwed up the calls in the first part of this. So eight, five, zero. Do call back in a little bit. The um, did you see I'll see if I can stump you here. Did you see Max Malone's latest video where he was talking about how the ISS is coming up on its 20th, 20 year anniversary? Right. Oh, and he goes, do you real again? I love Max Malone because it's not what he finds. It's what he doesn't find. He, he's really good at finding these blank spaces, and that is, he's, he goes, you realize there's no time-lapse footage of any part of that station being built by anyone? No one's no. documenting, you know, it, it's like, seriously, it's like the like the pyramids, you know, there's no there's no hieroglyphs of anyone ever building the, the pyramids or even saying how it was done. And he goes, not only that, but 20 years, all these crews coming up and coming down, you know, Japanese and British and European and all these other groups, right? He goes, nobody freaking turned on the cameras. There is no footage of a vehicle going from the Earth to the ISS. It's like the, you see the launch happen and then three or four hours later, it's like, hey, we're on the ISS in our khakis and, yeah. no, and no shoes. And, and the, only ca- the only cameras they have are they're always tucked in some little tiny corner on the outside where yeah. – where there's it's an obstructed view, yeah. and I'm like, why don't they put the camera like where there's no obstructed view? Yeah. I mean, why does it have to be in some little tiny corner where you can't see anything at all, other yeah. than maybe a finger or two? Or yeah, cameras you know, like a, cameras some, are cheap. Some, there should be cam- I mean, he goes not to stereotype. He goes, look the chap. He goes, the Japanese are camera happy. He goes, why didn't the Japanese when they went up there? They they should have had cameras. That play thing should have been bristling with cameras. They're selling, the, they're selling the nine, the Nikon nine hundred. I saw it at Costco today for five hundred ninety nine dollars. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. Uh, anyway, um, any, anything else? What was uh, I had? Uh, that was. Uh, I think that was it, man. <laughs> you know, I have, I have a million things, man. All right. Hey, well, <laughs> yeah, if you like if you want to if you want to have fun if you want to have fun, call in again to the uh, the Boston interview after I'm done with this. Oh, hey, just real fast. It's on TuneIn Radio. I looked at it on you know, the TuneIn Radio app that I listen to Truth Frequency on. Yeah. You know that app? Yeah. 
Okay, if, if you just Google 1030 Boston, it comes up just for your listeners. At, oh, right on. So if you use the TuneIn app, all you have to do is type in Boston 1030 and it'll come Yeah, you, well, you know, you got to do a little work to find it, like Boston 1030, hit go, and then, you know, there's a couple clicks. You'll find it, though. It's easy to find if you know how to use TuneIn. Right on. You know? Perfect. Excellent. Right, well, I hope, I hope people call in because, again, I am <laughs> dying to know what – you know, it's not April Fool's, so maybe is his it, producer, you know, maybe he told is his it producer. Is it one hour? Is it one hour? Or? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. It might he, be five minutes. It, yeah, he, right. he he may cut me off, although no one has cut me off yet. He yeah, he may. We'll we'll see. He, but he's he's going to take calls. So. All right, Mark. I anyway. guess. Hey, you have a good night, okay? Yeah, man. All right, see ya. Okay, well, we're going to take a few more calls before we wrap it up this evening. That phone number is 720-897-6111. Phone number is 720-897-6111. And while we are waiting, let's do a quick email from Al in South America. He goes, hey, Mark, I was wondering your opinion on the pale blue dot and family photo. What do you think? I think it's a bunch of crap. That's all I got to say about it. Don't share my email, please. Keep up the good work, bro. Thanks. 912 area code. Where are you from and what are we talking about? Hey, from Berkshire County. I think I got the uh, radio host figured out. Okay, what, yeah. What uh, is, Brad, Bradley yeah. J. Shoot, is he dying? Is he is he dying? All right, what's what's next week? I don't know. What is next week? Valentine's Day. <laughs> so he's got a he's got you, a woman I, that he loves. Six. He's got a woman that he loves that is bitching to him about the flat earth and he needs to know what's up and he doesn't have enough time to do any research. So he just goes straight to the horse's mouth. Wow. That's good. That's good. So you think it's like, okay, you got to research flat earth. And so now he's got to think, okay, what this is the best way to do it. You think? Yeah. Not only that, but it shows her that he's serious. You know, it's like, yeah, I'll look into it. And then he has you on his show. And it's like, look what I did. That's actually not terrible. I've heard I've heard worse, and that's that's pretty good for a motivation. Why not? We do a lot of funny things for women, and w- yeah, if if the resources, yeah, attract a producer. He contacts his producer, says, "Hey, get me someone in Flat Earth. I need uh, someone from the show, and I need him soon." And she finds him. She contacted me. She was and and then he contacted me after the fact. I'm giving you some new some exclusive. Don't tell anybody. It's just between us. Which is he oh, he wrote me separately and wanted to know if I was serious or if it was a gag. And I nope. said, well, absolutely, it's serious. And and you know, I, he goes, well, I've been researching your stuff. So all right, we'll see. So yeah, that could be it. Yeah, don't forget that you said that there's a lot of women in the flat earth. Uh, there there for, are so that's not bad for being a conspiracy theory supposedly yeah. yeah speaking of which yeah speaking of love speaking of valentine's day speaking of a lot of women in the flat earth community <laughs> yeah, let, let's talk let's talk about the flat earth dating site oh is it where up? is it oh where is it uh, there's been not several yet. people trying to work on it but uh, in fact, who was the? There was somebody who contacted me a few months ago, and they were trying to come up with. I think he was from Europe. He was trying to come up with like a flat Earth match type thing, and I and I I'm, unfortunately I do not remember the name of it. But there's it's going to be out there. Look, the, the after that one guy made that video saying I'm never can date anybody but a flat Earth girl again, and I think it applies to yep. to, to both sides. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that as soon as I heard that, I went out and I bought flatdate.com. You bought flatdate.com. Peanut Gallery yeah, says the dating site is Strange name. World. I don't think that's true. <laughs> Thanks, Peanut Gallery. <laughs> you you bought you bought flatter flatterdating dot com. Flatdate.com. Flatdate.com. That's good. Are you built? Are you in the I'll probably process pick up some more just to? Uh, well, I'm I'm not really into any of that sort of stuff necessarily. I mean, I do do graphic arts and some things, but what I'm trying to do is get people who are interested, either to pledge money or a volunteer time that know anything about that kind of stuff all right i do so, have uh the website bought i have flat eight at gmail.com anybody can send in there and show their support and a facebook page i'm planning to do like kickstarter or GoFundMe or whatever so if anybody has any ideas about that or what they want the site to be like they should okay. just send it to you flat date at gmail.com 
I'll get more together when I get some of that and maybe put it on another one of your uh, sites or something or sure. make a video about it. Sure, why not? So flatdate at gmail.com. Flatdate at gmail.com. Awesome. That's great. And who knows, there may be something coming up in the near future to where you could really get some traction on this. Could be, could be. Maybe Just maybe announced next week. I won't be the first one to announce it, but this thing will be... I, I can your your timing actually may be pretty good for flatdate.com. So if anyone's interested, contact him, flatdate at gmail.com and with suggestions and anyone wants to, you know, have, have some input on the website itself, I think you may be onto something. Or, you know, or methods to fund it, you know, whether it'll be I so said I don't think being a pay site would necessarily be a bad thing depending, you know. Yeah. Free is always the best. Of it course. depends. It depends. That's cool, man. Right on. Any uh, any other things before I? Because I do want to sc- try squeezing at least a couple more calls tonight. Um, just a shout out to uh, my girlfriend Murphy. It's a code name. Right on. Um, she into flat Earth. Let her know. She is. It actually took me only uh, five minutes to convert her over. <sighs> wow, you're lucky. So I got to make this website as penance for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. You know, it'll be like, hey, instead of trying to convert a girl, just find one that's already there. Cool. Cool. All right, man. Save yourself the pain. Well, hey, um, um, if, you get, if, you, that, if you're going to stay up late, don't don't forget to maybe call in and harass the uh, the maybe love struck radio show host Bradley J out at WBZ. I do. Uh, I do have something interesting I could call about. There you go. The Why not? It's, I mean, between I, I think it's going to be a toss-up depending on who's out there between flat earthers and potential haters. That you know, because if this is a news radio show, I can imagine that some people are going to just lose it. They are. They're going to be yeah. like this because this guy's never covered conspiracies, and all of a sudden he's going to talking to Mark Sargent. He's a flat earther, and it's like some people are going to literally sit up in bed and go, "Oh, I'm calling in. I've never called in in my life." There's going to be long-time listeners, first-time callers. Everywhere, I bet. But just yeah, well, if he's doing it for love, he'll keep it peaceful. Hopefully, we'll see. Or again, uh-huh. he could be quitting tomorrow. He could be sitting there with a five-gallon uh, can of gas and a road flare, just waiting to burn the place down. I don't know. Yikes! I know. You ever, you ever can tell. Anyway, man. Hey, you have a good evening. Okay. All right. Take it easy. All right. See ya. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. I've got a few more emails I can knock out while I'm waiting for the phone calls. And again, don't forget to check out WBZ News Radio 1030 as a CBS affiliate out of Boston. Bradley J is going to be talking to me about Flat Earth. I don't think this guy's ever touched a conspiracy before in his life, and he's going to open with Flat Earth. Either he's very brave or he has no idea what he's walking into. But I will be gentle. I will I will try to keep civil tones, you know me, and I will handle the callers accordingly. From what I understand, there will be callers, and you can call in at either toll-free 888-929-1030 or 617-254-1030. We got another call coming in here, though. 570 area code. Where are you and what are we talking about? Uh, hi, this is Ben from PA. Hey, how's it going? Uh, hey, about that last caller, yeah. I have a better name for his uh, flat date site. What is it? How about no curves? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that why Peanut Gallery? You know, I think Peanut Gallery beat you to that. <laughs> he he says, hmm, get get a cup, get a cups on that site. Uh, yeah. I see. Yeah, I there's see. some double entendres going on there. Nice. But uh, I I had a suggestion for maybe a uh, a debate guest you could have. Sure. What is it? He has a YouTube channel. He's, his name is Jesse Kozlowski. Is He's he, a geodesic he, surveyor. A, 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 no, well, I could try. But geodetic surveyor, he's 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 far gone. Yeah. In fact, I had to add geodetic well, surveyors. Have you have you seen his stuff? Yeah, I have seen his stuff. I have. So have I. And uh, if there's a problem with the curvature formula as flat Earth, as the flat Earth community is trying to use it, yeah, we need to address that 
Because, oh, I agree. I agree. If, but, yeah. But, but uh, Geodex... As far cert- as I'm, I'm concerned, that's the biggest scientific proof we have. And if that's flawed, we got to take care of it. Oh, no, I got gotcha. you. So, I got gotcha. you. Don't... I wouldn't... Jaron and Bob and Globusters and Jaron and Rod, they have dealt they with... Have they talked to him? They, yeah, well, yeah, I think they did at one point. Or they okay. went back and they went back and forth with him. Look up some of Jaron's older stuff. We're pushing sure, not, sure. not not quite a year old, but they had to they had to deal with him because he came out and and was saying, oh yeah, his first few videos were uh, really like hostile. And you know, the first hour of the video that I watched, you you know, it sounded like uh, cold hard logic or something. Yeah, calling he, everybody flat cards. But he, but by the middle of the video, he gets to his formulas and he gets to his work with the instruments, and that's the stuff we should take seriously. Oh, I people. I. I hear you. I absolutely do. I mean, I was listening to him pretty intensely. I was going, okay, could he be the guy that that could, that yeah. could mess things up? But then here was the problem. When I remember, I, I I dealt I dealt with two different planar surveyors from my side. You know, career uh-huh. career guys, and when I, now I know now more mm-hmm. about surveying than I ever wanted to know. And planar surveyors, again, plane flat plane, hence the name. They deal with 95% of the world's projects. Geodex surveyors deal in giant distances to where the curvature isn't as important. And let me, let me throw out one well, more thing. Well, Philip, if they observe it, well, we can't just they, that, can we? They, they, Even if the Earth isn't like totally flat, it's like it's a little bit convex, there's a bit of a bubble to it. Which is uh, why... Maybe that's what they're seeing. I don't really know. Maybe. I haven't done the math, but I'd like to hear some... Some different he, ideas on that. He, That's, so I just thought no, I got you. No, no, he's not. He's not terrible. People can here's, check him out. Here's where he lost me. He lost me when he went to a tirade on one of his videos, and he goes, he goes, so fine, eight inches per mile squared. And then I'm, I'm, this is almost verbatim. He goes, you're doing it wrong. And then he followed it with, so what? So you can see the Statue of Liberty from sixty miles away, you know, from the ocean. And literally, he paused. He goes, so what? <laughs> it's like what? I mean, well, so no, he, so uh, what? You shouldn't you shouldn't be able to see it. And he and he completely disagrees. Got to remember. He, he, now I'll end it on this. My my rant. But I will consider him. I'll look back into his stuff because of, you called. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of videos he does. It's called Flat Earth Proof. Show me the measurements. Yeah. And he takes on Land Ho. And uh, I just wanted to hear some people's thoughts on that because right. I'm a little bit on the fence about you know committing my whole worldview to flat earth oh, i see honestly it's a big jump but i got you look uh, into look up some of them i find it of, very compelling look up some of jaron and bob's stuff that they that when they were dealing with him last okay. year but will do but anyway but thank you thank you and i i will look into it again yep. i promise yeah i'll let you get to the next guy okay all right bye-bye see ya. All right, phone number to call in. We can take one more caller, 720-897-6111. And then right after this is over, I am going to be hanging up and picking up WBZ News Radio 1030 in Boston, talking to Bradley J. And you guys can call into that show if you want. I don't know how long it's going to last. And the phone numbers there are 888-929-1030 or 617-254-1030. Ten thirty, and you can listen live. All you have to do is type in Bradley J WBZ or the phone number six one seven two five four ten thirty, and it should take you right there. Because who knows? What, he is. This is not a conspiracy show. I'm going on, so I do not know why I am even there. I, I wait. Can't wait for his preface. Last call of the evening. Here we go. Seven zero four area code. 704, you are my last call, and you got about three minutes. What do you want to talk I'm about? I'm the last caller again. It's Candy from Dallas, North Carolina. Hey, what's going on? Wait a minute, North Carolina? Yep. Interesting. Interesting. I'm not going to say any more than that. What's, uh, what's on your mind? <laughs> okay, so I've been thinking, like, last week I couldn't call you, but um, I don't know why I got this idea one day. Like, what if the... Van Allen radiation belts don't even exist, and they found the barrier, and they just claimed that these radiation belts exist, and they couldn't go through them. That's that. I believe that. That I, you and I are, are completely on the same page. And by that, I mean Van Allen announced the belts in 1959, and he said, "Oh yeah, de- super deadly. No one should ever go there." And then, of course, Kennedy and the group screwed up because two years later, it's like we're going to go to the moon by the end of the 60s. 
And Van right. Allen's like going, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, how? And so they're going, Van Allen, how are they going to get through your belts? And he says, uh, we, um, you know, all you have to do is go really, really fast. So, <laughs> yeah. I can't, I still can't get over that. But I, I don't know why. Like I was, I was just a thought came to me and I was like, oh my God. The firmament is the Van Allen irradiation yeah. belt. Yeah, they, they don't even exist. <laughs> it was a partial. It was a partial lie. So right, they, they Antarctica just, and all that came in all in the same year. That it was all a big. Yep, conspiracy. the Van Allen radiation belts and the Antarctic Treaty, 1959, the same year. The outer edge and the upper edge. Hey, I hate to do this, do this, do this to you, but I've got to announce the last last little thing about the show. I'm going to go on, so I got to hang up for you right now. Okay. That's okay. I just had to get that out. All right. Hey, you have a good night. <laughs> All right. Okay. No more calls tonight. Thank you, everyone, for de- <laughs> bearing with me as I dealt with the technical issues. Right after this, WBZ News Radio 1030. The host name is Bradley, B-R-A-D-L-E-Y-J. And the phone number is to call in 888-929-1030 or 617-254-1030. There should be a listen to the live button on his page, so check that out. Anything else, guys? I'm exhausted already. I don't know how I'm going to do this interview. Although I'm kind of jacked up. It's, anything's got to be better than what I had to deal, deal with in the first half hour. Ten Commandments. I don't know them by heart. You may, but I don't. But there's one rule I try to live by. Treat others better than you treat yourself. If you do that, the world will be a better place. Special thanks to Peanut Gallery and my girlfriend, and TFR, and everybody in the Flat Earth community. Next week is going to be some big announcements, but of course, by the time you get to this show next week, you have already heard it. I'll just be beating the drum. And you know what? Come back next week. We'll be here. Same flat time, same flat channel. Gold star, if you know what reference that's from. And now I've got uncomfortable silence, because I timed it wrong, so there could be like 10 seconds left. No, there's only a few. See you guys next time. Evie, what is this? What is this? Is Is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? <laughs> I had to make a new one. What are you doing? <laughs>